How's it going everyone? Welcome to the Super Adventures. I've got some really cool stuff to talk with you guys about today. So a uh, postdoc in my lab brought these two articles up to my attention that basically address this question, why do elephants not get cancer? Or maybe another way that we can think of it is how do elephants not get cancer? Um, and I actually had an entirely different video planned out for today, but these two articles just came out within the last week. Actually, I don't even think one of them is out. It was actually um, released on something called BioArchives, which uh, you can put your, your scientific articles up before they're published so people can read them. Uh, and so given how cool these studies were and just that it's going to be a hot button topic in the upcoming weeks, I think, uh, I figured we would dedicate today to those studies. So before we get into the details of these articles, I wanted to just define what cancer is in a biological sense. So in the simplest form, we have our bodies are made up of cells. So that's what I have here. This is a cell. And typically these cells will be dividing. So it's not unusual for a cell to divide and they will die sometimes and they will replace themselves with more cells. But what happens with cancer is that you get some kind of a mutation. Some kind of a mutation and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you get some kind of mutation to this cell, to the DNA in this cell. And what happens is you get unregulated cell proliferation. So what does that mean? You get the cell will start to divide uncontrollably. So you'll get tons of cells. And over time you just end up with these big masses of uncontrolled cell growth. So these are all cells here and this might be something like a tumor. So so that's what we're talking about when when we talk about cancer, at least this at this level, at this biological level. So there are two major types of genes that are involved in cancer. Two major types of genes. So the first are oncogenes. Oncogenes. And oncogenes are involved in normal cell growth and proliferation. So uh, like we were talking about here, this, this is a natural process. These genes are not inherently bad. But what happens is if you have a mutation that involves one of these oncogenes, um, you can imagine that if you were to increase the activity of the oncogene, then that would lead to too much cell growth, too much cell activity, and that can be a real problem. The other types of genes that are involved in cancer, or that are often involved in cancer, are what we call tumor suppressors. And you might be able to guess from the name, but what these genes do is during the cell cycle, uh, it's normal for the cell to slow down its, its normal activities, protein production and things like that, in order to divide. And so these, these uh, genes basically put the brakes on what's going on in the cell so that it can do other things. But what will happen is that these genes will get mutated and you'll have a decrease in the activity that slows, uh, that slows this cell cycle down. So you can think of uh, these oncogenes as sort of they hit the gas. So oncogenes hit the gas, whereas a tumor suppressor basically releases the brakes. So they both do the same, they both have the same net effect, which is tons and tons of cellular activity uh, but they work in different ways. So how does our body deal with this problem right here? How does our body deal with cancer? Well, the simplest way that our body can deal with this problem is to first identify a cell that has undergone a problematic mutation. And once it does, it essentially sends that cell to its death. Uh, and we call this apoptosis, apoptosis. This is uh, cell death. 
if we don't have this cell, this, uh, this problematic cell, then we don't get this bigger problem right here. So it's a very basic but uh, powerful way to deal with cancer. But when you have mutations, um, we'll go back to our red color or something close to it. When you have a mutation in a gene like an oncogene, or you have a mutation in your tumor suppressors, you're very, very likely to end up with this, this, with this type of problem. So cancer is essentially a disease that operates at the level of the cell. Now, what has a lot of cells? Big animals. Big animals have a lot of cells. And not only that, but bigger animals have been shown to live longer lives on average. So the bigger you are, you're probably going to live longer. And what that means is that we have a lot of cells and we have a lot of cells that live for a really long time. And what you might expect then is that if, if each cell has the same probability of developing cancer, you would expect that the bigger the animal, so the increased size of the animal, might lead to an increase risk for cancer. But this is not what we see. We find that animals like beluga whales and like these elephants, they actually have a much lower rate of cancer than would be expected given the size and their, and their lifespan. And so uh, this, this has been known as Pedo's paradox. How is it that an animal with so many, uh, so many cells is really not at a higher risk for cancer? And so what did the authors do to address this question, to address Pedo's paradox? Um, there's actually two papers and cumulatively there's like 30 figures and I don't want to go through that much uh, detail in a single video so I'm gonna try to give you guys to the best of my ability this 10,000 foot view of what they found so I'll start out by talking about what one of these papers calls the guardian of the genome and I think that is a really badass name so what is uh, the guardian of the genome. That is this gene TP53. And TP53 encodes for a protein called P53, which you may have heard of, but if you haven't, don't worry, uh, we'll explain that right now. So we'll go back to our cell. And over the course of the life of this cell, it may undergo some type of damage. And what do we mean by damage? This could be things like UV radiation, so when you're out in the sun and you get a sunburn. These could be uh, from x-ray radiation, so something like when you go and get your teeth x-rayed, they put the big lead vest on you to protect you from, from this type of damage. Uh, this could be things like free radicals. It could be a number of different issues that uh, that cause damage to this cell. But fortunately, our cells have a way of terminating these cell lines that undergo uh, too much DNA damage before they can go on to cause something more problematic like cancer. And so how do they do that? Well, the P53 protein detects uh, DNA damage. It detects damage to the cell. And if the damage is significant enough, it will signal the cell to undergo apoptosis. So it will tell the cell, your time, your time is up. <laughs> Get out. And that is really the most uh, effective way we have of getting rid of cancerous cells. So humans have one copy 
of the p53 gene p53 and we inherit our genes we inherit one copy from mom and we inherit one copy from dad so you can also think of this as having two alleles of p53 some people however are born with a disease called lee fraumini syndrome and people born with lee fraumini only have one functional allele of the p53 gene so in a sense they only have a half a copy of this gene and what ends up happening is that people with lee fraumini syndrome have a 90 percent a 90 percent lifetime risk for cancer and in women it's almost a hundred percent uh, chance that they will develop cancer at some point in their life. Um, multiple uh, primary tumors are very common and it is also unfortunately very common for people with LFS to develop um, cancer in their childhood, so childhood cancer. And it's a very um, tragic um, disease and it, and, it, and it has to do with the loss of this P53 allele. So you can imagine that this DNA damage that's happening in the cell uh, isn't getting corrected the way it's supposed to, and so cancer rates are much higher. So what did the authors of this paper find out about elephants? Well, it turns out that elephants actually have 20 copies of P53. So they have 40 alleles of p53 so they just have a ton of guardians they have a ton of guardians in their genome and not only that but the authors also found that elephants have uh, an increased sensitivity to DNA damage so if we plot uh, our elephants here a healthy human and a human that has LFS and again remember that uh, in LFS we have either a half a copy or one allele in a healthy human we have two alleles and in elephants we have 40 of this p53 gene and we look at how frequently apoptosis occurs so how often is a cell being designated to apoptosis and in this way this uh, is preventing uh, potential cancer and if you look at somebody that has LFS very few cells are undergoing apoptosis so a lot of cells that have damage are allowed to survive in a healthy human we have more activity this is what you would expect in a healthy adult this range of apoptosis but in an elephant they're way up here elephants have a very high frequency of apoptosis which would suggest that it only takes a little bit of cell damage for an elephant to activate the p53 pathway and this may be why elephants don't get cancer or at least why they don't get cancer at the rate that we would expect and this is uh, one answer to the pedo to pedo's paradox and i will leave you guys with one last interesting piece of information which and I'll get just a new slide for this one so if you take the p53 gene and you increase the number of p53 genes in a mouse so you create a transgenic mouse that has an increased number of p53 genes this mouse will become tumor resistant so in the same way that the elephants with an increased number of p53 genes uh, have a decreased uh, risk for cancer you can actually create a, a transgenic mouse that has a similar reduction in their risk for cancer and this is a really interesting discovery uh, this along with these with these stories about these elephants are really important uh, especially for human health because what they mean is that we may be able to find a way to use this p53 gene to decrease 
the risk of cancer in humans and in other animals as well. Um, and so and so it's a really amazing story and it's a very exciting publication and I'll also mention that um, there, there's actually two publications so these were independently conducted studies which just provides further support for these findings uh, and, it's, and it's you know it's really very exciting so uh, that's what I have for you guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you did feel free to hit the thumbs up subscribe for more adventures um, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye!